Okay, is it all stuck? You don't know what to do? Looking for inspiration on how to write your book? I know what to do. There are steps to follow to literally unlock inspiration. Hey, I'm here for you. Watch closely and let's get that inspiration rolling. So you're thinking about doing something incredible, something you've never really done before, and you're wondering, how in the world do I get inspired to find the answers, the ideas, you know, and get back into that momentum? You could be stuck. Well, let's talk about what it takes to, you know, get inspired to write a book. What does it really take? Now, you've tried things. You've tried lots of different ideas, but you still are in the same place. I have some stats for you that I know will work because it works in many different areas of life of getting inspired. Now, it takes a progression to be able to have inspiration come to you. And progression means one step leads into the next step that leads into the next step. So as I share this with you, remember to follow the order of these steps and don't jump ahead because I really believe that we must open up our mind and also open up our heart to be able to have those great ideas come to us. And an opening means that it goes one step at a time. So let's talk about the time of day that you seek inspiration. You know, I've met a lot of different people in my life who try different times of the day to be inspired. Some are early morning people, some are late night people, some are the middle of the day. Well, you have a very specific time where you function the best. You might wanna try the early morning, or might, maybe you wanna try the late evening, or maybe you're the middle of the day type of person, but try each one of those times of the day because you may be surprised which one actually is going to produce the most inspiration for you. Don't knock it till you try it because I have met many people who said that they're not an early morning person until they tried it. And when they realized how much inspiration they got first thing in the morning, they switched from being a late night person to an early morning person. But test and try different times of the day to really find your sweet spot of when you can find the most inspiration. But I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess, and I'm gonna suggest that you really, really practice the early morning time. The reason why is it's a very quiet time of the day. When, and when I say early, I'm talking like 4, 5 a.m. type of early. There's a lot of calmness that happens first thing in the morning compared to the rest of the day and, and even going into the evening. But don't, don't, don't knock it till you try it. I've met a lot of people who switched from a late night person to an early morning person because of how productive they were in that early morning hour. The next step in creating and opening up inspiration is the location. Are you, have you been trying to sit at the kitchen table over and over again, trying to find inspiration or, you know, the corner of the couch, or maybe you've been trying your favorite chair, but it's not working anymore. Maybe you need a change of environment. Maybe you go outside, try sitting next to trees, try sitting next to a body of water, like a pond or a lake or the ocean, or even go find a small stream or a river, you might be surprised about which one of those things in nature actually opens up your inspiration. Again, I'm gonna suggest something here that nature is natural and inspiration is natural. So if you're struggling getting inspired inside the home or wherever you might be living, if, it's, if you're not getting much inspiration on the inside of the buildings, get on the outside. Get on the outside and get yourself outdoors and allow yourself to calm down and get connected to nature. But time of day and location. The next one is to practice tuning out some noises and some thoughts before you try tuning in to inspiration. Sometimes we need to block certain thought processes before we can open up and have some new thought processes. So the, the different parts I'm gonna ask that you, or suggest that you begin to block 
are any of those types of thoughts that have to do with, I can't do this, it's taking too long, I'm under pressure, you know, what if nobody likes it? What if I'm going the wrong way? Those are all doubtful thoughts. And anytime one of those doubtful thoughts pops up, turn your thinking into the exact opposite of what that doubtful thought is saying. And that exact opposite would be, they're gonna love this. There's gonna be so many people talking about this. It's really gonna inspire people to read this book. Or it's really gonna help them have a better understanding of this topic. So if you can block some thoughts and change some of those directions of those thoughts, you're actually tuning yourself closer to being inspired. Now the next one is to practice tuning in. What I do, I go outside and I practice tuning in to the outdoor noises. And I try to listen to noises that are pretty far in the distant and be able to block out everything else that's going on around me and just listen to one noise. You know, it's like a way of honing in your listening skills. And then I practice letting go of that noise in my mind and listening to that and I switch to something else maybe a little bit closer. But I practice choosing a sound or a noise to listen to for just a couple minutes and then I switch to another one. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to train my mind to tune into what noise I want to listen to or what sound I want to listen to. That my ears aren't just grabbing all the different sounds that are going on and it sounds like a big cluttered sound, but I'm selecting the sounds and tuning into it to where literally I can't hear anything else. Because when it comes time for inspiration, sometimes we get distracted and we lose that connection with inspiration. But if we could practice choosing what we wanna to listen to and we decide how long we're listening to it, that can be a great benefit to you when the inspiration begins to come to you to stay tuned in and to receive all of it when it comes to you. And you know what I'm talking about. When that inspiration flows and then a distraction happens and then you try to get back to that inspiration, it's like you lost the channel or the frequency it was on. Ah, so that's a bummer when that happens. So this has helped me stay in tune even when distractions are happening around me. Next, the questions. Sometimes the questions we pose are not the right unlocking questions. And if you keep asking the same question over and over and over again inside your mind, looking for the solution of you know, what to do next in your project, you may need to change the question. Just by changing the questions just a little bit could be what it takes to unlock your mind to tap into that inspiration. I've found myself many times where I'm literally go reviewing the same questions in my mind over and over again, but for some reason it's not coming to me. So I gotta rewrite my question, pose the question in a different angle, and many times that unlocks what, I, what I've been looking for. Then there's the answers. How do you track your answers? How do you gather your answers? Sometimes mine are in bullet points or sentences or they come in paragraphs. And sometimes I gotta type because they're coming in such large quantity or they're coming really fast. But no matter where these answers are coming from, be sure that they're all being compiled into the same folder or in the same file. You know how sometimes it shows up in random times and you type notes on your phone or you got a, a notepad and then another parts in your journal? Begin practicing at the end of each day compiling or bringing together those notes so that you begin to see that the pieces that are coming to you are actually painting the whole picture. Because if we wait too many days or even a couple of weeks before we compile those notes, we may miss the ahas of what we received to open us up to that next level of inspiration. So make it a daily practice to gather those answers together because it could be building a bigger picture than what you really thought. You could be making more progress than you actually realized. The last one, the actions. When we receive inspiration, sometimes we think, well, I can't start until I see the whole thing. I can't start until, and then we come up with whatever excuse it is. 
But I've learned that inspiration that has action taken upon it actually produces more inspiration. When I get up and get moving with what I've received so far in the form of inspiration, motivation happens. And to me, inspiration with motivation creates more inspiration. It raises me to that next level. My vibration, my excitement, my enthusiasm takes me to that next level. So now inspiration can come to me at the next level. So if I don't take action on what I've received so far, I could be staying in the exact same spot, but I'm wanting higher levels of inspiration. Ah, the secret is take action on what you have, organize what you have. I've seen where people have had notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks, but they didn't start doing the work because they thought they had to wait for the rest of the inspiration to show up. Remember, inspiration with action creates that motivation and it moves you up to that next level to receive the next level of inspiration. So the next time you're wondering, you know, why you're stuck or why you're stopped, maybe consider these bullet points here. Consider like, wow, maybe it's time to practice a little bit. Maybe it's time to take things one step at a time and develop your mind and your heart to the level, to that next level of receiving inspiration. As I've been inspired for projects to work on and, and my curriculum and my trainings for people out there in the world, as I've put this information together, I've gone through this so many times where I have to come back to these bullet points and go, okay, I'm trying to jump too far ahead. I've got to take it one step at a time. I know what it takes to be able to gather and organize great content and it is worth it. It's worth every step of the way. It's worth practicing. It's worth being patient. It's worth expanding your mind to be able to gather that inspiration together because lives are changed. And when you're inspired, it doesn't mean that uh, this isn't going to turn out to be anything good. Follow that inspiration. It's going to make a difference in other people's lives. And that's what we do here at Three Key Elements. We care about you, your vision, your ideas, your inspiration. And that's why we created this for you today. So that you can have that support and insight of what to do next. Now, I hope you subscribe and, and allow me to send you more videos of training in the other areas of your life that can support you. So subscribe and also check us out. We'd love to be a resource to you and a support to you as you are accomplishing the goals in your life because your life matters.